to the Town of Hadley Select Board meeting of June 7th. Um, so the first item on our agenda is the consent agenda. So tonight, um, the consent, we have uh, no minutes, but we do have one article 1749, 1750, 50S, and 1748 payroll. We have an automatic amusement license uh, request from Primo Pizzeria for one arcade machine. Uh, chapter 90 project request for crack sealing, um, various locations, and this is from our DPW. <coughs> and then a second one for a paving request, also various locations. We have um, an agreement amendment number one um, for planning assistance by and between the CPA committee and the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And then we have a police appointment of Lauren Triggs um, as administrative assistant to the chief of police. Motion to accept. Is there second. a second? Second. Would, Any discussion? Would the chief like to speak to us regarding his appointment? No. Yes. Oh, sorry. Go. Sorry. really <laughs> down. Thank you, John. John's dumping good time. Would you like to? Sure. Hello. Um, so seated next to me is Lauren Triggs. Uh, we hired Lauren, uh, if you remember, last August um, as a part-time dispatcher for us. Uh, she has worked out phenomenally. As you all know, Jackie Lipensky, who worked with us for about 11 years, left recently. Uh, we needed somebody to fill in in the interim. She volunteered and uh, very quickly learned that she uh, really liked the position and uh, we very quickly learned that she uh, is perfect for it. Uh, so I would like you to uh, accept the recommendation that we hire her as our new administrative assistant. We like it even better because she's local. <laughs> <laughs> motion okay, second motion made and seconded on the floor. Any further discussion about any of the items? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 So okay. Except for the DPW. <laughs> okay. Welcome. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, Chief, while you're here, do you want, do you have any reason to want us to, um, we have a housekeeping item, which is the approval of uh, appointments? Do you want to take that now? Jen while you're Jennifer and I have, uh, have gone over that list a few times. That is, that's all of our appointments. That's the standard uh, annual appointment list for you folks, and it's it's up to date. Okay. All right. So, uh, do we want to go ahead and take that item now? So, there's seven point three, the annual appointments. So moved. Second. A motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Did you say aye, Donald? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Okay. Great. Thank Great. you. <laughs> Change. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, we do have um, an allocated time slot for public comment. Is anyone here for public comment this evening? Yep. Yes, sir. Public comment. On what issue? Oh no, this is just kind of a general open time frame where if people have something that they want to communicate to us, they can. Okay. So you're here to for some other purpose. Okay. All right. Um, then, Excuse Donald, me, go Chair. ahead. Yeah. I spoke to the chief a couple months ago. I should have brought this up when he was here. Uh, coming from Amherst, going over the bridge on Rocky Hill Road, mm -hmm. you know where those cement poles are and telephone pole to the right, and it's a pond behind it? The chief reviewed it for me. In the last year, uh, those poles have been taken out 12 times either s wow. anywhere from six to nine and three poles, telephone poles have been taken down. And I'm wondering if we could put, when there's a snowstorm, you can't see them because the snow piles over those uh, mm -hmm. white uh, concrete poles. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if we could put some kind of reflector sign prior to that area. Where be, that would be DPW. We yeah. could ask them to do so that. So I'm just thinking it's probably Marlow, right? Probably Marlow. We want to ask. If it's happening recurrently. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. close to it makes that sense swamp, to do something. so they can't build a shoulder out very much. But yeah, they have been taken down quite a bit. And it, that's the road narrows right there when it goes to the bridge, too. So I think there was one there previously because the metal frame for a sign is bent over, mm -hmm. but there's nothing on it. Okay. So, so on the Hadley side, not on the Amherst? No, it's Hadley sign. Okay. So right after, you know, where you uh, 
enter the football stadium, coming towards Hadley, another maybe thousand feet, well, right you, where you rise to go over the bridge. Right, and so you you're going with the bus. Right? Yeah, you must be safe. And then the there's a pond behind it yeah. too. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and Jerry, since you're the liaison to the um, DPW, right on East Hadley Road, there's a um, some poles that you go over this little uh, not a little brook, but a culvert. Culvert. And you can't now see the poles. They're kind of leaning and they're covered with brush. Um, on the I west property? No, it's right. It's on both East sides. Hadley Road. It's on both, on both sides. sides. Okay. Both side and the west side, and it's a narrow road on the shoulder on either side of that thing. Yeah, that needs to be um, mm -hmm. addressed if they if he could take a look at it Did at you some call point. Call markers. Is that it to mark the, the edge of the road? So right, but they're the like there, they're leaning. Water. Hazard there. Happy to take care of that. Thank you. Just a bit, please. I'll take care of yours. Question as well. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay. So um, we have a scheduled hearing at 7:15, 7:25, actually 7:35 and 7:45. Mm. So well, we can do some other stuff. Then we'll do some other stuff first. So do we want to move to the substation and senior center updates? No. No. Oh, are they planning on coming? Okay. Yeah. We could do the. Fire we could do the fire station. Yeah. Okay. Fire station update. Did you want? Yeah, we, we met Tuesday, and the committee voted that me. I voted against to explore the stock bridge. And that's key property, sir. What? The Hynoski property, sir. Right. Tails wiping the dog, the dog's not wiping the tail. There was a motion made, and Joyce Jungle brought it up, to spend $5,000 to do some test board on a site. I think that's totally ridiculous, and we're going back to right to square one. There's no architect picked to look at that project to specify where a building can sit on that project. So, where are you going to? Spend five thousand dollars. Are you going to board a whole site for five thousand? I doubt it. So, um, given the fact that it was sounded like the majority, I'd like to hear the majority opinion of the committee. It, it, it actually was the majority. I, I made a suggestion that we um, ask the finance committee to um, give us five thousand dollars out of free cash, and I also asked if we could get legal opinion um, to see if. Is it proper to do test borings before uh, we say yay or nay to the property um, right for right of fierce diffusal? I imagine that we would need the landowner's uh, permission first. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, just to put it in context, the reason the the reason that this is coming up is because the bid came in significantly higher higher than anticipated, and we found out that. I think three hundred and seventy to three hundred eighty thousand dollars of the increase in cost is specifically related to the site work required to prepare the for preload. The, yes. Yeah, prepare that field for construction. So, given the fact that there's a possibility that we could buy another significantly larger parcel of land for mm -hmm. a comparable price, mm -hmm. then that. I, mean, I just want to make sure people understand why this was coming up at all, mm -hmm. um, which seems, in and, my mind, to be quite prudent. And the person that did the test borings um, did some geological, um, I don't know how he did it, but he did, right, Donald? Mm -hmm. the, research. And research and found that um, it was at a higher level, it was of better quality. Some areas are sandier than others. Um, he was able to tell this without doing some test borings, but it, it still would need to have the test borings done to it to be sure that that's what. This whole valley is of blue clay, um, and that's part of the problem with the um, piece on, well, it's not a problem, it's just everywhere. And to bring in the backfill, we would also use the um, property there. When you bring in, you got to take apart that other dirt would be used on the North Hadley um, site, um, so that was a little bit extra, but the total over is over $600,000 for site work. Um, 
it's five ninety eight seven hundred thousand according to the pa mm -hmm. piece of paper. Not the not the increase. But not the, the increase. Not the increase, total. but the total was five hundred and ninety eight thousand. The architect that includes a lot of other things. That's right. not just the site. No, I just said site work. And again, who's going to pick out the magic spot where this building's going to build? And also, why are you buying so much acreage for a substation? You guys are planning to sneak in the DPW, and you're not telling the people this. Um, Donald, did the, you have something the, you wanted the, to say? The fire yeah. station does not need I six acres or the, ten I, acres. I haven't even talked about DPW, and I don't think you have no, either. No, either. Nobody. Yeah, well, why are we buying so much land for it? Donald, go ahead. Uh, when we the OPM explained to us in entirety, he went out and uh, quizzed uh, Marion Construction, and he gave him a quote for just the upload Pretty where good. the sand has to be dug out. You have to bring in special soil, let it settle for six to nine months possibly. And that that bid was about, with the upcharges, over 400000 mm -hmm. right. Just excavating work was like three twenty, and the upcharges pushed mm -hmm. it over four hundred. Right. So the, the And then the site work on top of that, like Joy says, mm -hmm pushes every the site work there wasn't enough in the bidding process so it's close to seven hundred thousand like joy said how, how much how much was the drainage work on what we were looking at originally just the drainage work that's all the answers i have we have the what, you're, what you're saying is not all true well then you you tell us what is no true. i'm not going to because you, okay, you turn around and, and say one thing, and I'm going to say another thing. John, let, let's keep this a professional Excuse conversation me. here. We're, let's keep this to a professional level of conversation. Um, I am being professional. I'm just telling you, they're not telling you the whole truth. Both of them. So, sorry, John, what was the question? The drainage cost? Yeah, what, what's the drainage cost on, on the site that we're working on right now, John? Do you have that amount or not? Not, it wasn't broken down completely. Do you think but we could you, wherever you go, you still got to do the MS4 drainage on the new construction. But so we're not that close to the pond if we move to this other site. Mm -hmm. The pond, we really got nothing to do with it. Sure Absolutely nothing, because all the drainage has to stay within sight, and you're within the 30 foot setback of the pond. And according to Berkshire Design, that what they looked at that site that everything can be contained on that site. Jerry, did the municipal building committee weigh in on this at all? Uh, slightly last night, not, nothing significant. I, I have a recommendation though. I mean, I, I would like to get some of these answers that need to be answered here too. The entire committee, with the exception of one last night, voted or voted to have this brought forward and to review that other piece of property. It's a change of what the town actually voted on on town meeting floor. Um, so I think we need to bring in the entire committee, if we could ask for the entire committee to come here with the OPM and let's get some answers as to these questions that we have so that we can, you know, at either the next meeting or the meeting after that, so that we can decide professionally how we should go forward with this plan. I don't want it. He said, she said, let's get everybody in the same room and let's figure this out. Are you trying to say, Jerry, you're going to use funding with the town meeting voted for because they specifically voted for I, I don't I wouldn't say that at all John. I think it's money at that specific site if if you uh, cannot use any any funds out of there for anything else so we would bring them in to talk about that site so they can't do that see we well uh, at the site that we currently have they can talk about let's get this solved yeah. and then let's get the answers to what we need to I'd like to get an answer out of you of why you buy in such a big site for a substation we don't buy in anything. No, Your that, committee brought it to us. We're reviewing that information. Excuse me. It came from his mouth to bring it out in the first place to buy, to, ex, to explore your first right of refusal to buy it for what reason? Are you gambling, uh, putting the DPW on top of the, of the backs of the fire station? No one's talking no. about DPW. All we're so looking at is the fire station right now. But wh why, it's got why do land we need issues right now. Why do we need so much to the for pond, that? John? No, the, the we've got drainage issues over there that you don't want to answer me about. The what? 
I want to know how much the drainage is going to cost and what you're hiding there in the drainage that needs to be maintained for the I, next hundred years. Listen, all right. I'll give you no. a breakdown here if you can find it. That's all I have. You want to see it? So I'll be more than so happy to, to give you to that recap. paper. So again, just to, just just to I'd recap. I'd like to see it. Yeah. Just okay. So something. just so we'll bring, try to bring this conversation to a closure. So to recap, town meeting voted after a lengthy presentation from the from a couple of folks, including the, the police chief, to move forward with the substation in North Hadley. I think what we're seeing is that, you know, that presentation in large part was based on the idea that we would be able to effectively take land that the town already owned, and it would be very cost effective for us to put a substation on that property. So I, I think what I'm hearing anyway is that at this juncture, now that more work has been done, the idea of that being a cost effective solution doesn't seem to be on the table any longer at that site because clearly if we need to spend a comparable amount to prepare the site for construction and we could purchase land which hasn't been bored yet um, and have a clean construction site and acquire acreage because the last I left off we're not making land anymore um, there's only a finite amount to go around then it seems like that is something that we should seriously consider in the best interest of the town and I'm going to take it one step further, and this is just me, but now that, now that there's been such a significant change, the other thing that's transpired since we had that conversation with town meeting is we've now gone on record saying that we're supporting a full-time fire force, and I want to come back to whether or not it makes more sense to take those dollars and apply it to Central Station. So I agree with Jerry, but I also think we need to have the police chief in the room and have that conversation out before we go forward with or the a fire chief. Fire chief. I'm sorry. Before we go forward with this other project. So, how do people feel comfortable having that conversation? Two meetings ago, I brought that up at the uh, fire substation committee, and I asked the chief directly how he felt if he had instead of. $3 million roughly going into a substation, or you had it infused into your department $3 million, and you had a full-time department, you know, and uh, he's sort of caught in the middle because he supports the substation. But my belief now, I think that's possibly the way to go, because we were going to give the fire chief four new additional personnel, but we could only find the money for one. So, you know, the writing is on the wall. It's only time that we're looking at a full-time fire department right. with the amount of things they have to do. So, I, I mean, did, I just think we need to accelerate and the, that and conversation. The and the committee didn't say that they would abandon the project totally. They wanted information on that piece of property in North Hadley before mm -hmm. um, they would ask the town for an override to... Uh, continue with that piece of property because mm -hmm. that's what it would take would to go back to do a special town meeting and to take and get an override for the extra money that was needed so um, that's why they asked mm -hmm. to explore that other possibility sure initially when this was brought to town meeting the price tag on it was seven hundred thousand it has since dropped to four hundred thousand which is a significant figure Five hundred. I think it was five hundred. Uh, I thought the one we had was four hundred in our uh, real estate thing. Mm. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was five. But if you remember at the time, we didn't really have a plan for it. It was like just recommended that we buy a parcel with no real specific plan for mm -hmm. the, the land. And then that kicked off the whole town meeting discussion. Tanya? Yeah, I kind of have a random thought there in terms of. Um, um, funding the growth of the fire department. I don't know if you guys have looked into any kind of assistance to firefighter program grants that would help kind of phase in the costs. Yeah. Of, we mean, did. Thank we you. Did. We actually were denied a safer okay. grant. Okay. All right. But, but Brianna, <laughs> it's it's good to have the auditor. Three years in a row, if you can help yeah. us with that, we're yeah. more than happy. Absolutely. Yeah. How yeah. about no? Could you help us with that? <laughs> <laughs> we would love that. So, so when did we have, we had talked about having um, public safety in for, I don't remember if it was the 14th or the 21st this month? Right, so I think we had set them up originally for the 21st, but I was looking over your agenda for the 14th and you have a lot of time there, so we could, we could bring them in. Could, could we try to put this on the agenda for next you week know, then? 
Uh, to, to Donald's point again, and I and I keep bringing this up, and, and I've talked to the chief about it. Even if you go with full time, Amher still has call force. Northampton still has a call force. You're still going to need the volunteers. Amherst yes, doesn't have a call force. Absolutely, they do. has UMass. Mm -hmm. yep. Absolutely, they do. They, the, but they don't the, have um, the off shift people volunteer. carry a beeper, mm -hmm. just like we do. Well, so there's mm -hmm. a disaster, yeah. Yeah, and that's that's been the proposal all along, yeah. was that... You're, you're still yeah. going to need the volunteers. Yeah. Full-time departments still use volunteers. Right. Well, nobody's going to argue that point with you, John, but if you take another town, the biggest town in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts is Belchertown, 63 square miles. They only have one main station, and they handle everything no problem, and they only have three full-time employees there. So and they're all volunteer. They have a yeah. good volunteer force too. Yeah. You so know, there's no reason we're so not going to cut out a, our uh, volunteer force for sure. No. But my, what I'm trying to say, do we need a three million dollar building to house one or two trucks that could be housed in Main Station with full time people? If you have full time force, the fire alarm comes in and they're off and running. When you have a substation, these people have to get to their uh, site from their Wherever. bedroom, change up, get there, and the main station is running as soon as the alarm goes in. Mm -hmm. That's a big difference. Yeah. So let's have the conversation with the chief and he can respond to the, the questions then and, and uh, whoever else you think is needed from the, I mean it seems the whole, whole subcommittee should try to be present as well. Well we'd like though, I think it's, it's fair and I think they mm -hmm. some conversations to be made. Yeah. We certainly saw that the demeanor can be a little on the rough side. Yep. Five minutes over. Uh, and also, I'd ask oh, if that yep. we could please just hold up slightly um, because I think we may want to make sure that we do that at the same time if the um, um, senior center wants to come in too. We have the same OPM. I think it would be prudent if, we, if they need to come in and have some discussions with them so that we, we keep it open that they know that that date's available for them as well. Okay. You know, uh, my question's answer, answered back on the uh, fire station here. It's roughly 88.7, 800, uh, 88,700. For the drainage? For the storm drain. Storm yes. drain, okay, that was your question. Now that's just for the storm drain to fit on that particular site. What I'm saying is, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you're talking a little less than $100,000 right there. That could be saved if we could do a di different drainage system on a different piece of property. Yep, gotcha. <coughs> Five feet okay. away from the main station, mm -hmm. John, the cost is two hundred ninety-five thousand yeah. dollars mm -hmm. for all the experience, right? And it's the newest one we got from the old. Okay, yeah. is that what's data okay. on that one, Don? So we do have five. a. Uh, is it data on that six five? Yeah. yeah, John, we do have a scheduled appointment, so yeah. we're we're running late, so. Um, we have a public hearing scheduled right now for an all alcohol license for Joe, is it Eckerly? Yes. Eckerly, okay. Um, for the tap room, which is going to be located at the Mill Valley, Valley Commons. Commons. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, Jennifer, do you want to? Absolutely. Um, Joe came in with um, his application for an all alcohol general on premise license. Mm -hmm. um, he is met with Chief Spank Angle and to my heart at Billing Inspector. They both um, visited the facility, passed the inspection, um, <coughs> and they approved of it. Chief Mason is also approved, seen the application and approved of this application. And um, Joe's been very cooperative and everything is in order. Uh, all the letters have been notified and the public notice was published two weeks in advance. So, okay. What are you doing over there, Joe? Tell us. Sure. I mean, you got can I give you this packet I have as well? Just sure. for the brief description, sure. I'll talk to it. Um, opening, I'd like to open a tap room there, and we're going for a general all liquor license. Um, not, to, not to sell uh, hard liquor right out of the gate, but eventually, maybe someday, uh, start off with beer and wine, uh, all craft centric, uh, local breweries, local small farm wineries. Um, and just creating a tap room, kind of a one-stop shop for a lot of the, you know, the local brewers and a lot of the farmer wineries and the farmer brewers that are in the area. Low-key, um, higher class type place. It's not a place for, for frat parties. It's not a place to buy dollar pitchers of Bud Light. Uh, it's a place that people will come in, uh, enjoy a nice glass of wine from a local winery, pay eight to ten dollars for it. Same for the beer, somewhere between six to seven dollars for a pint of beer. Um, 
and just run a, a pretty classy place. Um, <coughs> one of the abutters last night had a concern that we were going to be opening and cars be driving away at 2 o'clock in the morning. That's not the case. We'll close at 11. Mm -hmm. um, I'm too old to stay up until 2 o'clock <laughs> in the morning anyway, so um, I've got chores at home. Um, so that's that's the game plan, um, opening uh, like usually around, probably around 5 o'clock and closing at 11 o'clock during the weekdays. Food? No food. No food. No food. No food. You can't drink and have, not have any food. People could bring food if, in if they would like, but we will not provide it or cook it or it, it space is not even set up for food. It's a 2,400 square feet, 2,422 square feet space um, right in the middle of, of the building there. Mm -hmm. Local breweries, is that what you're yep. doing? Yeah, so like an Iron Duke, um, a um, Brick and Feather, an Honest Weight, some of the little small ones out there that could really use a hand to get their, get their product out into the marketplace. So Black, uh, Black Birch, one of the wineries, local yep. wineries as well. Okay. Do you do you make any of this alcohol at all? I do not. Okay. You there would be people that <coughs> would want you to showcase their material to buy it elsewhere. One more time on that. Is one. it a bar? It's a bar. Okay. It's right. a tap, tap room. room. Tap I, don't, I don't mean to. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a bar. Okay. Yeah. Classic bar <laughs> without all the shots of alcohol and stuff on the wall. You know, at this point, eventually, when there's a local distiller, there is such a thing as a farmer distiller, someone who's small <coughs> scale makes their vodka and their in their rum. I would love to get someone like that in there. There's just no one around right now that's in that category. So. The one right across the street. They don't make it though. Yeah. They, made in they bring it in. Yeah. 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 So, Poland. any other questions for for Joe? Madam no. Chair, the yeah. only comment that I have is. The intersection it's in it's a very problematic <coughs> intersection mm -hmm. trying to get in and out of there are just going down Mill Valley Road trying to get out of Mill Valley Road and uh, I could envision envision that being very congested in that whole area and backing up possibly uh, Route 9 and yeah. causing major problems but the planning board already allowed for the development to go in right? yeah. and they have a site plan but I think that's something we we have talked about that intersection before. Do you know? It's kind of on the watch list. Do you know if District Two was ever notified about that intersection for further plans on Route Nine or not? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Weren't they after that meeting we had with the the, the poll hearing or yep. whatever? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Um, so this is a public hearing. Does anyone else have anything that they want us to offer about that? Is it yes, sir. Eight? I'm in the blitter. Uh, 257 Russell Street, the immediate abutter. Mm -hmm. My name is John Skibisky, mm -hmm. and I have reservations uh, concerning uh, uh, a tap room there. My interpretation of a tap room is that people will come in and they'll be drinking the evening away and then leaving, and that intersection is a hazardous intersection. It's not easy maneuver out of that Mill Valley in, in, onto Russell Street. And people that would leave the cap room at that site would be impaired. Their judgment wouldn't be as good as maybe somebody that uh, didn't come from the tap room. And my concern is that uh, the site is too dangerous for an alcoholic uh, operation. And for that reason, I would be opposed to uh, uh, a tap from going in on that site. All right. Thank you, Mr. Skiski. Um, Police chief was made aware of this and was signed off on it. Yes, he was. <laughs> If I may, I actually met with the police chief out there. We took the site. I walked through the room, the parking situation, um, and yeah, he didn't have. It, it, I agree. It's a, it's a tough corner. It's it's a, you know, whether you've had a beer or you haven't, it's a tough corner. Um, but the police chief did not seem concerned about about that. So you would be the first um, business to go in here. No, there's actually Step two dancers, dancers in there. Two others. Yeah. yeah. There's an Irish dance uh, studio to the right and a karate studio to the left. All right, any other questions? My other question is, why do you choose not to service food? Um, because that's a big part of uh, making your revenues for your business to operate. So a lot of things. One, that's not my wheelhouse. Um, it's not what I do. Um, two, that, that, that facility is not set up for, for food service in any way, shape, or form. There's, um, there's, I have to actually put plumbing in there for, for what I want to do um, and just not big enough for a, for a restaurant. 
especially with the gas moratorium on. Yeah. Well, I'm just thinking even munchies, you know, something like that. Yeah. You, know, you yeah. probably have pretzels and all that stuff, probably, or nothing. It, well, see, you know, a lot of people will come with a thing nowadays is, is, is food trucks. The more food trucks can come in, and it's not on Route 9, it's on the side street. No. Uh, that's for some people, <laughs> not for me. Um, the people just get, they'll order uh, order delivery. In. So we'll have a phone there. People can call and order food that can be delivered right there, and they can have it there. Um, it's just not, it's nothing that, that I want to, I want to, Get into, I'm, just, I'm not good at that. I don't want to do it. So, sure. right, you we have your to, business plan. Yeah. If we were to allow this this evening, and we found out down the road it did become a problem, what are our rights as a select board at that point? You can always, if you have a public safety con concern, you can always bring in the applicant uh, and review the, the license, review the practices, uh, and uh, make a decision at that point. It can be revoked. Yeah. It, mm -hmm. it can it mm -hmm. can be revoked if you have a reasonable uh, reason to do so. So you understand our concerns, you understand the concerns of your neighbor here, and uh, I think we're going to hold you to your yeah. word that, that you take care of that issue. One, 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 last, one more thing real quick. Um, all our servers will be TIPS trained. They go, we pay for them to be trained on serving and how not to serve certain people. It's, it's, uh, I, I mean, it doesn't matter. My wife's a lawyer, so she's not letting me get into any trouble whatsoever. So, and I'm a, a vice president for a very large company. I have... Um, I'm a pretty responsible person, and um, believe me, none of us want to have someone drive out of there and, and drive into a tree. So it's, I didn't see her name on this. She's a lawyer. Tim, you? Well, I, certainly, there's been a number of us that have been there quite often. Um, anybody with common sense doesn't take a lot from coming out of there. You take a right. Take a right. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit longer, but you know, if it gets really bad. Maybe we can ask them to put up a sign and say, right. when you leave, please take a right yeah. instead of a left. Okay. I think patience and common sense are two of the first things that leave when you question when you talk about alcohol. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. True. Yeah. Motion accept. <laughs> can I ask one more question I'll before second. we do that? Have you run any other establishments in the past? Or is this your first venture with alcohol? Uh, my wife owns an establishment in Florence. Um, that's her establishment. She runs that, so I hear the stories when she comes home. Um, my first one with alcohol um, in a situation like this. Okay, so there's a motion made. Is there a second? Second. Okay, so motion made and seconded for approval. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, congratulations. And as uh, Mr. Devine said, we'll, we'll circle Absolutely. back once we have some experience. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank, thank you. Good thank you, Mr. Skrbisky, for your input, sir. Okay. We have um, a scheduled appointment with our outside auditor, Ms. Tanya Campbell from Melanson Heath, and Tanya is here tonight to give an over, provide an overview of the audited financial statements for the fiscal year ending 2016. Thank you. Thank you. Now, given that the time constraints on the meeting. Did you want to just talk specifically about the mansion letter, or I can talk about a couple of the key numbers in the financial statement? Yeah, I, I think what would be helpful um, is we've been having a lot of conversation about just the general health and well-being of the town of Hadley. So maybe if you could just kind of sure. keep it at, you know, 10,000 feet, and then yes, the management letter. Okay. You mean in the 10 minutes allowed, you can't go over the 61 page? I know, I know. Just okay. like, can you give me a, like a one-minute warning or something like that so I can just <laughs> Um, sure. So, at, and of course, we're looking at June 30th, 2016. But at that date, the town had oh, just over $2 million in the stabilization fund, which represents about 14% of mm -hmm. the town's annual budget, which is a very healthy stabilization, stabilization fund balance. In addition to that, you also had about $550,000 in your OPEP trust fund, which also, you know, for a town your size, is a very healthy balance in that fund. Um, you know, a lot of towns are struggling in terms of trying to put money aside for that. Um, and you guys seem to have a good system in place in order to, to put the funds away. Um, Did you say that again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to start playing. I really don't agree with her. I just said it's a healthy balance. Her. I'm not saying you should put money in there. I said you have a good system in place. Mr. Devine will remain silent for the remainder okay. of your presentation. All right. <laughs> 
from the bond rating agencies and the outside, you know, financial advisors, I mean, they obviously look at your reserves. That is a reserve. Obviously, it's more restricted than a stabilization fund. Um, so, it, you know, it would be a good idea to put money in that first, but you, you have a very healthy stabilization fund balance. Um, you also have a healthy unassigned or unreserved fund balance in your general fund as well. So what's, what's available, it's like the starting point for your free cash calculation. That was about $900,000 at the end of 16, um, which was about 6% of your annual budget. Again, very healthy within like the DOR's recommended range. Um, so from that perspective, um, I think those are, speaks to the, you know, mm, good financial position of the town. Um, you know, things like your OPEB um, liability or your net pension liability, like other things like that, that I'm sure you guys have heard a lot about lately. I mean, those are huge unfunded liabilities that everyone has. Um, when you look at anyone's financial statements, those numbers are just astronomical. Um, and it's going to get worse because um, in 2018, the town's going to be required to book the entire share of your OPEB um, unfunded liability in your books. Um, currently, you're allowed to you're allowed to like amortize that total liability over 30 years and book a little bit each year. Um, but the agency that kind of set that the parameters for doing that has changed their mind and is now going to require everyone to book the full amount, which is what was required with um, the net pension liability, which is your share of the Hampshire County Retirement Systems. That was required to get booked last year. Um, so both those are, are huge numbers. I think like, mm, I don't know if you guys have, $5 million in net OPEB obligation at the end of the year, which will go up to close to $7 million in a couple of years. Um, and your net pension liability is 10 million. So. And what's the cash impact of those? Um, nothing because they're uh, pay as you go. Right. You're, you're, right. you're not required to fund them. Mm -hmm. You're paying you know, what you need to pay on a yearly basis in terms of your retirement assessment, which is on a schedule to be fully funded, I'm assuming around 20, 30. About tw 20 years. Yeah. Something like okay. that. Um, everyone's just a little bit different. But, and the system as of 1231-15 um, was about 50, 55% uh, funded. Mm -hmm. So, which is pretty much right in line with all the other retirement systems in, in this area. So, okay. um, so yeah, there's no cash impact on that. You're, you're paying it every year through your assessments and your retiree health insurance, which is what your OPEB um, liability is, you're, you're paying that cost yearly too. Mm -hmm. so. All right, that was a Very good, thank plan. you. Yeah, and so are people comfortable with Tanya going right into the management letter then? Sure. sure. All right, so in terms of the issues we found during this year's audit, um, I don't know if you guys have a copy of the management letter in front of you, or I emailed, I a, copy kind of I emailed um, a draft one plus our responses. The first one had to do with entering your your revenue budget budgets in the general ledger to actually track your revenue versus what you're actually taking in, your your budget of revenue versus what you're actually taking in um, in your general fund, your water fund, and your sewer fund. Um, that wasn't done in fiscal year 16, so there was really no good way to kind of track how well you were doing. Um, your expense budgets are in there, which is clearly, clearly more important than entering your revenue budgets, but your revenue, entering those budgets in the GL, you know, allows you to look at it quickly and see like how you're doing and also provides um, historic information. Like if you're going forward mm -hmm. every year, you can quickly look back and see, okay, what, what did we budget last year and what did we need to budget this year? As mm -hmm. opposed to having it in Excel spreadsheets or different sources. Right. So um, <coughs> we recommend those get entered. And my understanding, I did get the town responses, that's been corrected for 17. Mm -hmm. um, the other um, budget issue we found was that when a capital item is ordered at town meeting and say it's for um, borrowing, that approved budget was not being entered in the general ledger um, immediately. Um, mm -hmm. During the conversations we had during the audit, our understanding was that there was, they waited until 
conversations had kind of occurred between the department head and the town accountant and the treasurer to make sure everyone's on the same page before entering that information in. Um, but things can happen with capital projects. Time, you know, extended periods of time can, can pass before things move forward. We would just recommend that going forward, as soon as it's voted at town meeting, when you're entering all the other budget information in there, that that gets entered as well. So you mm -hmm. have you have that um, tracked immediately. And the management's response, sorry. Is there a time frame on that? No, I mean, there's not a time frame on it. It's just, it, you're just entering a budget so you know, like, okay, we voted to spend this much and this is on this project. Exactly, mm -hmm. yeah. so like, if you start spending it, you can monitor that. Um, my understanding is that has been resolved for 17 as well. Okay. Um, the next time I had to do improve, to approve accounting for capital projects. Um, when the town votes capital items, they're like a separate account set up for each capital item so you can track those costs separately as opposed to just entering them lump sum in the you know, general ledger. So you can track the revenue and what you've expended on those projects. Um, during fiscal year 16, we found that the expenses were being charged to the right line items, but the revenue, like when you transferred in funds from stabilization, all got transferred into one line item as opposed to being allocated to the different accounts. So when you got to the end of the year, you didn't have a true depiction of kind of where things stood in that project. Um, so we recommend, obviously, that going forward that the revenue and the expenses be, you know, posted to the correct accounts so you can actually see kind of where the project is and especially at year end just making sure you um, cover deficits and, and things like that you don't want to get hit in your free cash right. so, okay. and I'm sure that um, has excellent well, I like these ones if you wait, know, if you wait right? long so enough to get the audit we'll have to look for something new next year I guess right okay challenge accepted um, the next comment, there's a couple like smaller things we noted in there. Um, there was a public safety um, equipment grant that um, ended up in deficit at the end of fiscal year 2016. And when we had made inquiries about it during the audit, um, we were told that you know it overexpended and it would have to be funded on next year's recap. Because um, I don't know. If it wasn't being monitored properly, or there was some miscommunication about what the and we had you know, some what personnel turnover as well. Yeah, yeah. Mis mis misunderstanding. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So process. yeah. So I read the uh, read the response, and I guess that has been resolved, and there's no longer an issue with that deficit, which is good. Um, but unfortunately, so I can like take that out of the manual letter. You know, I don't know. I mean, it's still an issue in terms of like monitoring it, but. There's no deficit, so I don't know if you want me to like. Mm. So this this was an item of discussion during today's department mm -hmm. head meeting, yeah. as uh, the the accountant was saying that he he doesn't get as many of the grant uh, copies mm -hmm. of the grants as he should, and so I think having this here as a reminder for all okay. the departments that we need to tighten up. I just up wasn't our sure if you want me to tweak the wording and say that it need to get raised next year. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, and I agree that this particular issue with that grant, um, in fact, we we have since gotten all the funding. And I think mm -hmm. when you were being when you were here for the auditing, it seemed like it was too late. And I th when they they had their additional meetings okay. with the Department of okay. Revenue, they they retroactively approved more okay. funding and understood the situation. Okay. So that's been solved. But I think David's right that this um, some, having something in there saying we need uh, to monitor all of our grants a little more closely won't hurt us. Okay. That, that Is this letter part of a bond rating at all? Does this Requested for bond rating. I, I don't think, think so. I think, think the amount was so small. Okay. Yeah. 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 There's no right. No yeah. major issues. Okay. Um, the next issue we noted during the audit was the trial balance, the report of all the um, revenues, expenses, activity during the fiscal year. Didn't agree to the balance sheet that was submitted to free cash um, for free cash certification. We always tie those numbers out. Um, and we later found that there was an entry or two that got posted for brief cast certification. I, I don't know how it exactly works, but yeah. but didn't end up in the report that we got. So, you know, I don't I don't know how free cash was certified before we got the reports for the audit. So I'm not sure. I think there was some kind of issue in the system. Something didn't get released. 
and um, based on like what the what the response said. Um, so, so you want it a got, hard like, cut manually off. adjusted for free cash certification, maybe, but then just didn't get released in the report. Uh, report we got. But, so that um, sounds like more of a cutoff issue. Yeah, I don't I don't get how it I don't get how that works. Though. Yeah. So I guess not 100 percent clear on that, but going forward, we'd recommend that like. All entries get posted. Everything in the general ledger actually agrees to what is submitted to the award for free cash, and then at that point, it'll agree to whatever is given to the auditors. So I think there just need to be some tying out there, maybe after the fact, and it, that didn't happen. So. Mm -hmm. Question Mike? Yeah. Ask a question. Sure. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mike Szerzynski, 10 Laurel Drive, uh, Planning Board member. Okay. Used to be a member of the Hampshire Council of Governments, and as, as you may be aware, Hadley's a member of the Council of Governments. Yep. And the council has some significant liabilities. If my, I'm curious if those liabilities could potentially flow to the member towns if the cog is dissolved. Um, I don't believe so, but that would be more of a legal issue, I think, um, in terms of how they were the master in law they were established under. Yeah, yeah. Um, are you talking about in terms of their um, their retirees? Re retirees, that health benefits specifically. Yeah. If you look at the balance, you get a significant. Yeah. We get their audit there. too. Um, yeah. So they do, and I, I I'm not I'm not sure. I know um, another town that we're auditing um, is talking about that with a, a collaborative that they're a part of and wondering if they're that's an issue but I, I do believe that's more of a legal um, you'd have to get a legal opinion on that I would think the state might take that over I know that they're trying to work with the state to get them to take that liability mm -hmm. um, but uh, they haven't been okay, successful thanks. today yeah sorry I hope not I yeah. so I think there's just one final comment is that it? Okay. Yes. And that had to do with, with um, reconciling the cash check breakdown on the turnovers. Um, so currently when a department does a turnover to the treasurer, they give a copy of the turnover form to the treasurer and a, a copy to the accountant. The accountant posts it in the general ledger, the treasurer posts it in her books, does a deposit, and then at the end of the month they reconcile cash and theoretically they should agree. Um, as a check and balance on the treasurer, actually, um, if Justin or someone in his office could randomly, because I'm sure it can't be done on every single one, but pick a sample, um, you know, maybe every other month, pick a couple turnovers and go to the treasurer's records and trace to make sure that those turnovers, um, the cash and check, on the amount that she deposited into the bank agrees to what he's seeing on his turnover. So he needs to bring his turnover forms in there mm -hmm. and make sure those amounts agree. Um, the town's response, um, I wanted to just recommend a little bit of a change in that, only because I think you had recommended that you could provide him copies of Right, that's what we thought. If I, if, um, because it's, we don't, I only do one to two a week, mm -hmm. so maybe it's six a month. Okay. So we thought if we copied the turnover with the deposit slip, which had the date of the deposit of the cash, okay. that that would take care of it? Or you just, we need something else? No, that's fine. I was more thinking you were just randomly going to give him some, and I'm like, that. I, if the check is on you, you picking which ones? Oh, no, I was gonna, we were doing all, all of, them. of them. If there's okay. cash, okay. that we would just do it, because there, because there really aren't that okay. many. Okay, and that I'm six, okay with then. Okay. Six pages. In fact, yeah, we, we talked today and thought even if we just scanned them and sent them right. to him, that, right. that would be okay. So, just, you know, I mean, we've we've seen before where you know unexpected receipts come in. You know, same yep. numbers tie. They don't find their respective and, home. Yes, yep. exactly. So tying out the actual cash check, you know, prevents that. Even if it's done randomly, if someone knows you're doing it, then you know, sure, it's a good control. Uh, any questions for uh, <laughs> Tanya on the management letter or anything else? Your uh, your total balance for the whole town, the uh, on page fifteen. Fifteen. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Okay. So that's uh, 
net balance due of $20 million. That's what that's what we're carrying right now, roughly for a total. <coughs> um, $20 million. That's your long-term debt, your land foreclosure liability, which is an estimate over okay. the remaining like 14 years or whatever that you have um, to monitor the landfill. Your accrued sick and vacation time, which like if everyone left as of June 30th, like mm -hmm. that's what you'd have to pay out based on the contracts. Um, your net OPEB obligation, which is your retiree health insurance, and your net pension liability. So mm -hmm. that's um, that's kind of all your liabilities at, at, in one um, yeah. one lump sum. No, I, I'm just going back to Mike's question with Hampshire County. So that that that's got the retirement in there right now. That yeah. So that's your share of. The unfunded liability of the retirement of the, the retirement right now, because I mean it's not their liability. They're you know they're not they're yeah. managing it for you, yeah. but um, it's the responsibility of all the members to fund that. Okay. Um, but we're in a Hampshire, positive position, it, and that's Hampshire County Retirement System. He's talking about the Hampshire Council of Governments, the yeah. you know which um, is a little bit different. I mean they're the state runs the retirement system. Every they the Hampshire County does, does the par you know yeah yeah no the state doesn't the state doesn't so no. it does go through Hampshire County yeah you all your retirement contributions go to Hampshire County retirement system and okay and they pay your retirement couldn't excuse me the state say yeah uh, we'll take care of it they're gonna decide leg legislatively that these obligations will not be the obligations of the member towns. <coughs> That would be a solution, wouldn't it? Are you talking about the retirement system yeah. or the, no, the, the, the COD? Co 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 yeah, that yeah, could happen. That's, that's um, the there's no way that it would ever be funded by the group insurance trust, no. which is a portion of that. No. I mean, they're very legally they're they're legally separate. And, mm -hmm. you know, and we're going to have um, Joe Shea from the group insurance okay. trust in, in two weeks, twenty first, one week, one week, fourteenth. Right. Okay. Right. So yeah. we'll we can address some of these issues when he's here then. Yeah, I mean, yeah. he can't speak to the, to the no, council, he but, can talk about um, the trust. but he can talk about the trust, which is in, you know, much better financial shape. Yeah. Okay. So anything else? If not, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you coming in. No problem. Anytime. Especially when you're sharing good news. <laughs> thank you. Yes, and as of right now, you have very little debt, but... Um, that's about to change. I think in a minute five. it's going to change. Five. So, uh, yeah. going to sit here five more minutes. <laughs> Okay. All right. Thanks very much, Tanya. Yeah, thank you. <coughs> okay. So our 7:35 appointment. I'm running a little late here, so 15 minutes. You didn't give me a Monday morning. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. You're bringing good news. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We only cut off people with bad news. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, Tanya. Okay. So we have um, the treasurer and our um, outside uh, advisor, David Eisenthal, here this evening to talk about our short-term borrowing. We have. Uh, and coming up next week, this is what went out to bid a couple weeks ago when it came in. Our interest, uh, we, it's 1.996576, is the new band principal. And, and, and band, because people are listening at home, is a bond, bond anticipation note. Basically, it's a note. Yeah. These are one year notes uh, that we are doing at this point while we're building up to the bond stage when we, we will be definitely in bond territory when we get these larger buildings um, further along because our total amount that we are bar eight or nine million dollars I think is the total or that we ultimately will need to put into a bond but in the meantime we're building up slowly rather than borrow that money early. Mm -hmm. uh, last year we uh, did a four hundred thousand dollar note which carried us through till this year. Uh, we were paying half of that off and refinancing half of it, rolling half of it into the new one year note. This will be almost $2 million. The interest rate we got on this was 1.24. Repeat that, please. 1.24% for our one-year note, which is, uh, which is it's, it's drifting up from last year. Last year it was, it was great, point seven four, but 1.24 is pretty good, too. So that will take us another year. Um, if, 
if this isn't enough, if the buildings really uh, get going earlier in the year, we'll, there's, we may possibly halfway through the year, maybe October after our fall town meeting when we see what else is, uh, by then we'll know if there's something else in the pipeline and we'll be able to make adjustments accordingly. We may do yet another note in October that would either be for a full year or it would come due with this one and we might be ready to go into a larger phase. But for now, we're doing the one year note. Okay, and when we went to town meeting and we talked about the possibility of if the substation, the senior center, and the library, right, all go, and we talked about that $95 increase in taxes, the, what was the interest rate assumption we used on that? 5%, right, okay, so again, I just want to give- 5% ultimately on the bond. But we, we right. did have a rising note level. And, and uh, Dave Eisenthal and Unibank did, our, did all of these estimates for you. This might be a good time to have David talk. And what I can do is go down the row and have you do some signing. Mm -hmm. is, does that make sense that we do this at Sure, it works time? for me. OK. Right. Well, well, Madam Chair, uh, yes, we <clears throat> last fall prepared a uh, capital financing plan uh, that um, Really, and I, I think we did this very cooperatively with the treasurer, with the town administrator, and with your board, uh, and got some good direction from the board as to how you wanted to see the impact uh, on the tax rate from these very significant capital projects that were authorized by town meeting last fall. Mm -hmm. And uh, we did assume a 5% interest rate, but that, that was on a the bond, bond issue yep. that would that would be three years from now, and I, I still I think even three years from now that's probably pretty conservative. But I, I felt that it was better right. to be on the conservative side than not on the conservative side. Right, and I, I just thought it was good for and of course an anticipation note's going to carry a different rate of interest than a than a long term bond. But I think it's good for people to hear that we're still in this incredibly attractive rate environment. Right. And, you know, this is the first financing following the uh, release of that capital financing plan. And uh, uh, as I said, the, the goal is to structure the financings to maintain that uh, relatively stable tax rate impact. And I think, as, uh, as Linda said, our, our next step is to assess cash flow projections of the, especially the two major capital projects that determine amounts and timing of additional financings. And we have been assuming a major uh, ban issue, much larger than this one, as early as October, okay. though, if uh, particularly your fire substation is going a little bit slower than had been imagined, uh, then uh, it's possible that, they, that the timing or the amount could be different, could be later, could be lesser. Mm -hmm. uh, it really, uh, I expect that I will be speaking with the treasurer and the town administrator about expected uh, projected cash flow right. um, expenditures. Sure. If the bond that we were looking for for both our senior center project and for our fire station ends up coming in somewhere at two versus an anticipated number of five that we plugged in, what is the dollar amount difference between that? Is there is that an easy number to figure? I mean, I know it's, it's not three percent off of it. Come on, David. <laughs> it's a significant number. Um, I could figure it out, but I wouldn't want to. I would have to be doing a lot of key punching to figure it out. Okay, I, I mean, we're we're number. crunching numbers everywhere, and that's an important important number. I do think that two percent, maybe you know, on a and we were we're expecting with this to be a twenty five year bond issue. Uh, the final payment projected for this issue would be fiscal year 2045 uh, with bonds issued in 2020. Um, I think that even at lower interest rates that prevailed, say, in the last three to four years, uh, I don't even think you would have seen 2% for that. I think at this point, a 25-year issue, you might see going with a credit like the town of Hadley, I would think that you could be somewhere under Three percent. If if this happened now, but I think there are all kinds of reasons why the town is not in a position to uh, do a permanent financing for either the senior center or the fire station, the North Haven fire station. At this point. At this point. Okay. Okay. Thank we you. Have we I'm trying. 
No, we, I, I yeah. agree with you. It's, it's a good haven't point we in to the make. past uh, refinanced any time that we could anyway? So you when have. you do go out to borrowing and we do a bond for X number of million dollars, you look at everything of what we have on the books and then go back and, and do it again? Um, um, everybody in this room has been very diligent about pursuing opportunities to refinance mm -hmm. debt. There are not currently no such opportunities. The bonds that the town issued in 2014 uh, are callable sometime early in the next decade, meaning that that's when they, the bonds can be paid off. And there is a procedure called an advance refunding where the town could issue bonds in well in advance of the call. I do not imagine at this point that an advance of funding of that issue would be economic, but we will be watching that. That would probably be the next opportunity, maybe in a few years. Mm -hmm. We will be watching for that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, David Eisenthal or Linda about this? Okay. If not, you need us to vote on this, or is this? May I ask one thing, Madam Chair? Oh, hang on. Yep. It's kind of simple, but uh, I know uh, the auditor alluded to the OPEB. That being one problematic area we have to watch very diligently. Is there any other areas that we should be watching that could affect our uh, standard and poor's rating? You know, I think that um, the way that the uh, standard that standard and poor's looks at uh, OPEB, it's considered to be a debt and contingent liability, which is 10% of the rating. Um, I think that as you know. My sense is, and I haven't, I, I haven't looked at the numbers closely in terms of the recent, and I, we, haven't, we haven't seen the fiscal 16 audit almost a year after the year end, uh, but the, uh, I, my sense is that the fact that the town has a significant um, trust fund offsetting the liability would be, is helpful. Um, but we will, you know, we're going to keep, we will, I guess I'm not really answering uh, the member's question directly, but we will look at whether there is cause for concern. My thought at this point is no, there's not a lot of cause for concern, but it is something that we all need to be watchful for. And it could have, if the liability, both on the uh, retiree health insurance side and pensions, started to expand relative to town resources. That is something that we would want to uh, watch in terms of uh, impact on the credit rating. Significant increase in staffing. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, or, you like know, if for drivers. whatever reason the liability increased if uh, um, the investment funds didn't perform as expected, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. And somebody had uh, asked at our meeting last night about if we had gone uh, for the property in North Hadley to do the extra work that we had to do on it, would we go for an override or would we ask the citizens to take money out of stabilization? Mm -hmm. You know, and I'm that's like, a lot. no, that's, that's a pretty eight, good chunk coming out of stabilization. Eight hundred thousand dollars, which wow. is, uh, I don't think you're already talking. You know, you, you got that two million one uh, in there. That's uh, just a nice cushion that you don't really want to. Yeah. You can you can speak to that. I mean, that would not be a, a good business deal to take that, that out of there. I mean, I think that one of the very great credit strengths of, of uh, the town of Hadley is uh, the very significant operating reserves. And uh, that doesn't mean that you can never use operating reserves. And I mean, I think, I think there could be intelligent use of them. But um, we'd want to keep an eye on uh, where the uh, both free cash and the stabilization fund uh, sit relative to the town's uh, operating uh, expend revenues and expenditures. Mm -hmm. You know, back back to that other point, we're, we're sitting on twenty million dollars of liability now, long term. You know, on top of the eight million that we're looking at these two buildings right now, and possibly a third, and that's that's the big question that we're all looking at is if something did go wrong where will we be at you know the I think that unless something very drastic happened the town would have 
very good access to the capital markets. Uh, I don't think, you know, and I think unless interest rates go up radically, and even what, what, what we presented in the fall was actually the case of interest rates going up radically. I mean, I think 5% would represent, yeah. on a, for a 25 year bond issue, would you represent. Know, and, and to Jerry's point that he asked, you know, if we're not looking to borrow this, this bond at, in three years, that 5% that we had projected, and it's three right now, mm -hmm. you know, 2% is a big, big number, you said yeah. yourself. Well, I, I'm going to point out that we did discuss the option of having at least a partial permanent financing earlier to take advantage of uh, lower interest rates. The difficulty there is that it, it's my understanding that this board's policy view is, that, is to maintain as stable a tax rate impact as possible, and doing multiple permanent financings would cause uh, peaks and valleys in the tax Some rate. Some impact, yeah. More yeah, of an impact. So, but yeah. to maintain, and you know, you mentioned the, the liability. The, li the town is also paying down every year um, a portion of its long term indebtedness. Mm -hmm. So, as we get closer to 2020, some of that money will be rolling off. Some of it we're paying down and some of it we're just maintaining. So. We're paying about a million a year. Yeah. So, um, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I think that the, uh, the it, 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 it's, it's really, a, it's, you are the policy board of the town and if you chose something different that would be your choice. But our understanding of where this board at least was last fall was to maintain as stable a tax rate impact as possible. Mm -hmm. And if there's an e ever an argument from your perspective where you think maybe we're missing an opportunity because of our policy, I would hope that, that you would work with the town administrator and treasurer to bring that to our attention, too. Yeah. I mean, we're doing what we think exactly. makes sense, yeah. but if there are best practices out there, given the rate environment and you want to talk about it, we're happy to have you come in. Right, and I think that we when we made that call as to how you wanted to do the financing, I, that didn't commit, you, you didn't set up a plan right. for any of us that this is what we're going to stick to no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. That every time, uh, well, uh, we come in here every time we have a new note, it's going to be at least a year, maybe twice a year, we reevaluate at that point and maybe we're, we're and, and as far as going out for the bond, we don't have to wait till we get to there. Everything's done now. As Dave is suggesting, we could be doing a smaller mm -hmm. one in the meantime and take care of that and, and mm -hmm. pile up. So there's a lot of forks in the road of how we handle this. And one suggestion you said, Jerry, what if the interest rate goes down? Um, we could have the interest rate go down, but still keep that tax rate up there by more of the amount that we allocated to pay debt and interest each year. More of it would be going to the principal. Fill it in. Yeah. Or we could say, well, let this tax rates start drifting down because the buildings uh, aren't happening after all or you know something else so there there the, the situations will will change and um, each time we have a town meeting there may be yet another capital item to consider so mm -hmm. it, it's it's very fluid but I think right now it's going the way we you know we have thought it would at this point okay. so you need us to approve this borrowing correct um, it's your choice mm -hmm. uh, the Department of Revenue, which is certifying this note, does not actually require a vote. Oh, okay. but it's your choice as as the select board to if you want to take a vote. That is, what that's probably the cleanest. Okay. Best practice. Okay. Is there a motion then? There is a motion. Second. Motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Can I ask him one more thing, so, so no, Madam no, Chair, we, before you leave? We've okay. We're signed it all anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make it quick. If you make it quick. Yeah. yeah. Another problematic area is when we leave annual town meeting, we postpone it to fall town meeting, hoping our free cash account will build to over a half a million dollars. What's going to transpire if we don't have the rose economy that we have now? We start losing meal tax, hotel tax, and say we're $200,000 short. We probably would have to get that from stabilization to make sure we fund the 218 budget. You know, you're going to the issue of how the town budgets, and my, my view of that is that in general, the town budgets pretty conservatively, so that you do generate, when conditions are good, you do generate that, where hundreds of, you know, a couple hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars in free cash. But I, th I think it's up to the management of the town when that times are not as good. And actually, 
Um, I've been working with the town long enough to see some of them. Most of the time, it's not the local economy that suffers. I've actually ne you know, almost never seen the local economy here in the Pioneer Valley suffer. It's mostly what's ha what happens in Boston with the state budget that can have a negative impact out here. And what do you do if you get either at budget time or even a mid-year 9C cut from Beacon Hill? Mm -hmm. um, so I guess what I'm saying is, yes, it's, uh, it's, it's worth thinking very hard about if times don't, don't do, don't, uh, if, if, if economic times do get hard, uh, that's when conservative budgeting becomes even more important. Uh, you're not necessarily going to generate the free cash, uh, but you might not. Uh, you might be able to manage with more with more of what you have. You know, we're very fortunate to live in the five college area. That's the reason why we don't see the recession like other cities do. I absolutely. The influx of money every year of students coming into the area. You know. Yep. Okay, so we're um, about 25 minutes behind for our next appointment, so thank, thank you. you. And our, um, Linda, and you're staying for the Hampshire? Yeah, okay. Um, um, if there's something I need to notarize? All right. It's uh, ultimately a vote to authorize the uh, notice to the unions that you're going to take a vote on uh, uh, health insurance uh, next week. Okay, is that fairly quick? Uh, it can be. Because the discussion really will be next week. Yeah. Right. Where Joe Shea is coming in to talk yeah. about it. But there's a need initially. Okay. So, so, so basically next week we're going to be asking you to adopt uh, three sections of uh, Mass General Law Chapter 30. It says three. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say three and then we can cut it back to two. Um, okay. So let's not quibble. <laughs> So next week we're going to be asking you to uh, add to your tool chest for financial management. And in this particular case, the financial management will be your ability to do, engage, if necessary, in plan design for the uh, health insurance. Uh, in order for you to take that vote next week, you have to give the unions and the retirees and the Secretary of, of Administration and Finance at least two days' notice. And so we have prepared letters to go out to the four unions, the retirees, and the secretary of ANF uh, for you to authorize that, uh, that notice tonight. That's basically what we're talking about. Okay. So this is basically an administrative item, and any conversation of substance will occur with Joe Shea next week when he's here. <coughs> so okay. Moved. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Seconded. All in favor? <coughs> Aye. Aye. Okay, and if you have you the have document, then I'll sign it so that they can take it and notarize it. Yeah, it's general. Uh, they don't. They don't need to notarize no, that's it. Else. That's oh. Sure, something needs to notarize. Uh, this would be the uh, the. Uh, David, that's general, right? Heron, APR. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a second. Issue. David. Yeah. It's already been done, right? What? That's not an additional thing. That's just being notarized. It's already been. You approved. need you need to uh, vote to authorize the APR. Okay, so can we jump to Heron APR then? Sure. This has all been discussed, and this is again, it's uh, administrative. Yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so if you want to pass that down, I'll sign it in front of. Uh, let's see. It looks like there are places for the entire board to. Two places for the board and one place for John. Okay. And so. Yeah, okay. Great. Right, good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Municipal Building Committee, welcome. Sorry. We're late. <coughs> um, so you had asked for audience. You wanted a dedicated time slot yeah. with us. So you guys want to go? You want to shoot? Yes. Okay. So uh, there was a couple things that uh, we just wanted to go over with you. And we know we're kind of on a hold pattern be until we figure out what's happening with all the buildings. But our understanding for our future goals, which I'm hopeful is what you, your understanding is, that we're going to be an oversight of um, the buildings, per se. Okay. Our, our mission would be to evaluate the buildings, see what might be needed 
on a continuous basis with regard to any type of projects. Right, Large not, not maintenance, right, maintenance not is maintenance. being carved out, yes. Yeah. Yeah, but we can review that to make sure that there won't be some larger maintenance items. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then bring that to you for a recommendation. And then it goes to uh, uh, David and Marlo with regard to uh, uh, getting the, 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 all the figures together after we, we get the estimate. Some of the greatest things about what we're in here tonight talking about is that many things that were on your hit list have been accomplished, a great many things. Yes. So I think it's, and, and I kind of was pushing for everybody to be in the same room so that we were all working in the same direction as to what our, we, how we envisioned and how you guys envisioned and how we could work together to get to where we're trying to be. You guys are close to the end of uh, the list that you had. There's a couple things left to do. We know that they're talking about painting this building talking about maybe CPA taking on some of those things. We know the DPW is there's one of the like things. 60, uh, if you take the painting out, there's like $65,000 worth of stuff that we still have yet to finish. And very minor compared to the $735,000 worth of stuff that we've already accomplished. Okay, so you know we're, we'll put that together and make sure that you have it. Get, make sure that Marlo has it and then he, he can run with it with Gary. But our thought process is that we're just an oversight from now on um, and working in tandem with you to figure out what's, what the projected uh, capital expenses might be and what the things that, that we see are potential issues, making sure that the buildings are maintained properly from now on. That's and of course, I think we're looking to see what happens with the library. Yeah, we're kind of on hold on these thing. buildings yeah. right now. Yeah. And if whatever way it happens, then, then we'll, we'll work with that mm -hmm. and uh, come up with some recommendations. Mm -hmm. And if we, mm -hmm. if we have the same building, we'll, we'll have some recommendations. Mm -hmm. And one of the, the things, and it, it goes along the line of the conversation we were just having about cash flow and borrowing, you know, obviously any capital improvements, again, you know, Capital in nature, not your ongoing right. maintenance, right. You know, fixing a stairs <coughs> or something, but the ongoing um, coming up with a capital improvement plan oh, yeah. and a time frame would be extremely helpful in informing yeah, and the treasurer and us yeah. from a budgeting standpoint. Yes, exactly, and and we know we we need to uh, jump on that quickly because certainly that is something that uh, everybody's going to be looking at. Mm -hmm. And we have, and it'll be a lot of different scenarios depending on what happens with some of the buildings, depending on the growth patterns in with, in with regard to some of the departments, i.e. police um, and dispatch. There's some thought process on there to make that work better. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll look at that and figure out what would be the best way of handling that with, with the powers to be and then come up with some guidelines for that and then we'll go forward. That's, so I guess that's right. Yeah, well in a, in a couple of weeks we're going to go through the buildings again and just walk around, see if there's anything we're missing, see if anything is looking out of place and can use a little, unfortunately, maintenance, but you know, maybe there's something we can also um, see that could be developed mm -hmm. down the road. So more towards the capital side of things. So. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. I mean, yeah, it makes sense to, to me. Any. I think Mar Marlo certainly has jumped in on his um, new role with this. Um, of course he and, <laughs> and, you know, it's, and it's going to get a lot smoother quickly. I think we need to begin to our thought process to where we're going with things like Russell School and things like that. I mean, it's a big, big thing that we need to sit down and address. It's been sitting there for a long time. I know that's it was true. utilized last year, but that's another one of those things that I think it's it's not going to get any better. We need to somehow think, sit, and at least have some initial conversations as to the ideas as to what it, how what shape the building's in, what the value it is to the town, what we need to do with it. I mean, it's just and another it one of our problems. And yeah, we have to come up with some ideas. We have to come up with some costs, and that way we can go th possibly through a ballot question to everybody and say, do you want to keep this building and it's going to cost X amount of dollars? And these are the possible uses 
and you know, and that's a it's going to be a big question. Yeah, I mean, I've asked this board, and I've asked your board too a couple times. It, it doesn't cost us nothing at election time to put a non-binding question on the ballot with some of these questions that we keep asking ourselves and discussing week in and week out. What's the question though? I mean, my, my point is I don't think we even know the question yet until we, we understand. What are we going to do with Russell School? What do you feel we should do with Russell School? A, B, C, D. Put on. four options there and see which what direction we're headed. We, we've dealt with the other buildings. Those are our primary focus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we certainly, you know that we, we kind of had a flip-flop on how our thought process was, but that's fine. Yep. We are where we are. We're going to go forward with these things. But yes, this is the time that our committee needs to look at, seriously look at Russell School and give you some recommendations and give the residents some idea of what it's going to cost. Yep. And, what and we all we know it's going to cost a great deal of money Will if we want to keep it. Wrapping in the, um, the master plan update too, are you reviewing that? And Seeing if there's anything in there we relative should be. to <laughs> yeah, we, yeah. Um, because the town center is, you know, we've always talked that it's important to us as a committee, and I think to the town as a whole. Um, but we should see how that interrelates to the master plan and um, see if we can maintain it in a way that's useful to everybody and that's without losing our identity. Because this is really truly the identity of the, you know, the town, and, and that, that is part of the right. massive plan. What the, everybody has said exactly, and I think that goes back to so to John. John's point and Jerry's, you, you want to, if we're, we're going to go back to the town and ask them anything, you want it to be in the context of something. So it would be yeah. helpful for them to say, you know, our master plan indicates, you know, has anything, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that would be great if you guys do wrap that into your well, review process. Keep in mind, though, we are planners and we would just be going off of what somebody else probably should be leading. Um, oh, absolutely. You know, well, in the I, town and the planning. In that respect. Yeah, I mean, the planning board really is taking the lead on the master plan, but I mean, it's excellent information, and everybody mm -hmm. should be using that as some sort of a guidepost in all of our decision making. There's a lot of input. So, right, yeah. so I just don't want to forget about it. Mm -hmm. you know. mm -hmm. Anything else for the folks from the Municipal Building Committee while they're here? Well, I think after they go through the buildings, we should have them back and again sit and have a. You know, like that, you know. Yeah, and those could be a lot of. We have a lot of miles. So we just had a discussion earlier this evening about the fire substation. So it, there's going to be more soon about about that project. Um, haven't heard from the seniors yet tonight, but we will with that project moving forward. Um, the library grant. I think July 13th is the magic date, right? So we'll know if the grants thumbs up or down. Won't, won't presume an out, but I mean, it, if it's if it's dead, we'll know that. Otherwise, we'll know that we're staying the course with that. So, I think there's a lot happening over the summer. Yeah, we're available to help with anything. You know, just mm -hmm. even putting something on a ballot or whatever it is, uh, you know, write something up. Uh, just let us know what we can do. So, has has your board taken a vote on on our endeavor here with the substation? It was just presented last night. It wasn't a full board. Okay. Yeah. Most of us, majority of us. Okay, anything else for our good volunteers? <laughs> good job, guys. Thank you very good much. Work. Yep. And you know, we knew we have the new um, uh, roof on the public safety complex. That I looks hope everybody great. drives by. Yeah, it does look it, good. Yeah. Uh, is another one of those extremely smooth projects. Um, there was no real hiccups with that. It has mm -hmm. come out extremely well. Mm -hmm. It has come at budget, so we we don't have to dip into the. Uh, That's the third budget I give about you. I venture to point out it's on budget, but it was the third budget. So. <laughs> That's true. Well, yeah, and we and you know the reason why it's not because of anything other than getting it off the ground. Really, with the way yep. this state deals with these projects. You guys needed, last night it came up, there's something that needed to be signed. What was that that needed to be signed and how do we clarify that today? Oh, it's that a, was, that was the bill for the... Uh, no, no, uh, the contract. Isn't there a contract that we're wondering whether or not oh, it's been... It, yeah. It's all... Is it all set? Yeah, I asked David if, um, if everything's been set with uh, Architectural Insights. Oh, all for the library? For yeah. the library and everything that's yeah. all been signed. Yeah. Good okay. point. That was a good point. Okay. And you're happy with your liaison? 
Oh, 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 Jerry, we love you. Oh, 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 everybody say Jerry. All right, all right, all right. Stroke him. Do you still want to do it? David, you have something? Uh, so I got a uh, penultimate bill for the, the roof, uh, everything except for the 5% retainage. Do I pay it? For the roof? Yeah, for the roof. Yes. Okay. Did they finish today? All done? All except for the retainage. Punch list. The work is done. Punch list. Punch list, okay. We didn't vote, but I would imagine. Yeah, you tell me you're. We talked about it last night. We tell me you're you're, you're unhappy, and I won't sign it. <laughs> We're very happy. No, no, yeah, I'll take great. care of it. Yeah. Nice room. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. And so, seniors, you here to talk about the senior center? What would you like to know? Uh, an update on the senior center construction project. All right. You can go ahead, and I'll jump in. Had the form. We had the forum. The morning of the forum, we had the estimators' results come in, which were much higher than we anticipated. Um, and I think there was also a shock to the architects because they had been saying this looked like something we would be able to do, and that's why they were encouraging us to go along at that level of 12,000 square feet. Um, so we were basically quarter over the construction budget, which means that we have two options. We can try and trim, no, we can do value engineering, excuse me, mm -hmm. correct term, um, to see where we can save on that building. They also presented us with another, several other options, including a smaller building, which might have an addition put on it later that would function for us. And it will take about two to four weeks to get the actual cost on that building because it isn't dollar per square foot when you reduce a building. My base, yeah. It's yeah. not. Yeah. But the meeting was held and the redesign was put together. An, an alternative <laughs> design was put together, approximately 2,500 square feet less than the original plan that was put together to start with. And uh, the, the parking lot has been made smaller and egress has been a question as to whether it's needed or not needed onto Route 9. Uh, we're talking about exterior designs, I mean um, materials that's going to be on there, and everything else that we're talking about as far as materials that are going to be used in the building. Yeah, one of the things is there's so many components. So let's say there are 100 components. We've got numbers back if we change three of them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a process because it isn't the same person that does all of them. The window person does the windows and the door person does the doors and the ceiling tile does one thing. So it's all, and then if you change, if you take out a window, you still have to put in the insulation and the wall inside and outside where the window is going to be. So it isn't just a clean right. removal of that cost. Well, and I think, I think this was articulated by, by all of you at the outset of this and certainly folks up here that I think everybody's far more concerned that wherever the project goes that it's done with the highest value and quality and we're not hung up on time frame and I know there's always a concern that we have pressure because of rising costs but I think we have all learned that it costs you far much you know far more in the long run looking back saying coulda shoulda woulda right. um, when things aren't done well so and we are um, committed as a committee from the get-go we've all said we do not want to sacrifice the quality of the building mm -hmm. so um, one of the things that we were surprised at when the estimate did come in was the actual cost of the site work which mm -hmm. was budgeted for 340 I believe and came in over a million um, so so that was a huge surprise to us um, we're looking at um, things like where does that drop off in uh, buildable soil happen, seeing as how there were only three borings done? Can we isolate that particular place a little bit more by doing a little bit more studying? Um, can we, what is the cost of going from one um, water management for the parking lot system to a different one? And if we do do that less expensive one, how many parking spaces can we get out of it? So we're looking at options like that to see if they're workable options um, that wouldn't have uh, 
a, a, that would still work well for the functioning of the senior center, but would have a greater impact on the dollar amount. Mm -hmm. um, we want to look at every option that we can. Um, you know, I guess it's want versus need at this point, and we're being very realistic. Um, and um, if we end up, you know, one of the options being the, you know, if we, if we do a 9,500 square foot building instead, it can be designed in such a way that if we can come up with the funds within a time frame or down the line the seniors decide, you know, whatever, uh, you know, it can be those two or three spaces that get deleted from the original building. Don't, we don't have to reinvent the site to make it workable. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're trying to be forward thinking, Good. get it within budget, have a building that, you know, that we're not going to have to go back and change like the HVAC system, the safety complex, things like that. We want to do it right. We want to have a building that's going to last, that people are going to want to come to, and that's going to serve the needs. I, I would just say that some of the discussions relate to this very tricky issue that uh, the chair here mentioned of value versus quality. And I'm a big value person in my own personal life and so on. And I must say that it cuts both ways. Early on, we had a lot of discussions about energy efficiency. And we had people exploring LEED certification and other kinds of things, which some people would say were indicators of very high quality in a building. And we finally came to the conclusion, I think it's fair to say for the committee, that we wanted as many of those energy efficient features as we could include without going through the very great extra expense of actually qualifying for the certification. For the certification. Exactly. So that's my idea. Yeah. And I think there's other, I mean, lately one issue was, well, would it be the end of the world if we ended up with vinyl siding on the outside? Mm -hmm. okay. We haven't answered that question, mm -hmm. but not optimal, but maybe a reasonable compromise if money is tight. So where we're at right now is we've thrown all those options on the table for reducing those costs, and we've been told they have to, between the entities, between the civil engineers, figuring out the questions with the parking lot, geotech, and the cost estimators getting back together again, the gathering of that information is going to be two to four weeks. So we're not jumping. Mm -hmm. We want to do this right. We want to get those figures and make an informed decision based on that. Mm -hmm. okay. So we'll expect to hear really the next major update will probably be in July then. As soon as we hear yeah. back from them and the committee meets and make some decisions around the direction we think we should go and mm -hmm. we'll keep you updated. Okay. Super. Anything else for our I should say seniors, senior senior representatives. <laughs> Oh, he doesn't miss uh, tell him I'm what sorry. a good job he's doing. Yeah, I was just saying, he's waiting. He's on his own, <laughs> Mr. Goldie. Yes, Jane? Right Great <laughs> under the bus, Dad. Great right under the bus. I don't like him, John. When I spoke to uh, David Nixon the other day, he said he was putting this project on administrative hold. What does that mean? Um, it means we're not signing contracts with architects to, to authorize design work until we figure out how we're going to move forward. But we need them to do design work to get the numbers we want. Haven't we already signed those contracts and we are in the midst of that? I mean, they've been working their tails off, you know, doing plans and doing estimates. I, mean, that's I, not I, I don't know the, it's already been a the contracts of it. They've right. done, right? right? What they're doing is conceptual. Right. And what David's talking about is the, the true drawings. Yeah, well, the no, we're still drawings. in schematic. Oh, no, we're still yeah. in schematic. Right. We're still schematic. We're not, schematic. not doing anything that's committing us to a course of action until we are all clear as to what that is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, we can, no, that's but, I think that wouldn't be until by, July. By all means, go ahead and do your due diligence with okay. it. And work with the architects. And yeah. the OPM. Right. Okay. Fine. Yeah. You know, initially, it's it's really a tough decision the committee has because originally you were talking 12,000 square feet by cutting 2,500. I know the committee always says, and your director, you're building a building to take care of the service needs of the elderly, and you're continued with that commitment. 
but I'm wondering by cutting 2,500 square feet, how long is that commitment going to last before we're looking at putting on that addition again? Well, you that, know, that, that was Gary's point at our last meeting. He, you know, he brought up the he brought up the point that, that if you if you know you're going to need an addition, then you know it's already too small. So 2,500 square feet less is a, a number that will represent how we're going to meet the budget. There's a big gap between what the estimators came out with and what we have to spend. And if, if you know, the fact of the matter is this building is going to cost this much and we have to downsize it, the OPM said that it's probably not going to happen through value engineering. You know, it's going to have to take a big, huge chunk of building away. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he suggested, you know, maybe you should consider uh, going back to town and asking Gary, asking for, for more money to get it done right the first time. And, 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 and we're doing the same thing with the fire substation. Yeah. We did the same thing with the sewer pump station. It, once we get into the design work, it, it changes so much, so drastically, and the costs mm -hmm. go up so quickly that it just mm -hmm. it, it blindsides you sometime at, at what this stuff costs. So and NBC. it's not, it, you know, it, it's it's on a needs issue still. It's not on, on a wish list. It, it's you know th this is just the, the quality of the, the, quality the buildings that, that you're putting up. And that's what I, you know. The, I'm, I'm very proud of the, the Senior Center Building Committee for sticking to their guns about having a quality product in the end. Um, and pretty, the MBC last night pretty much you know voted that we were missing one person, but it was it was five uh, zero with one uh, one abstention uh, in support of of going forward with the senior center building as long as they as long as it stays in budget no matter what the size of the building if they can if we can build a quality product in that budget and it's usable that's fine but if if the fact is the building it, you know is going to just it, you're just going to need more money we're going to have to go back <coughs> for more money to get it done then the NBC would not support and you know the the you know going, going forward with that without you know, complete, you know, look at, at uh, you know, what, what we're actually doing here. I mean, mm -hmm. we want a quality product and we want something that's going to serve the town for, for years and years and years. We don't want to screw it up. We're creating the past here. Don't want to, we don't <coughs> want to make a mistake. I know, we just, we just, Timmy just stated, you know, there was over 800, almost a million dollars in repairs we did. Some, some were needed repairs from wear and tear, but a lot of them were just lack of maintenance on our public buildings, you mm -hmm. know? And part of it was because we didn't build it right, you know? Right. Installing obsolete products. Exactly. One is not a good idea. Yeah, and I, and I wholeheartedly ag agree, but I think what we're hearing tonight is we're, we're not quite at that decision we're point at yet. Decision so, point. So, so the next <coughs> milestone is really yeah. mm -hmm. that and July and meeting, again. whenever that happens. And again, the yeah. once, once the, we know what's gonna happen with the library, that, that'll clear mm -hmm. um, you know, a bunch of and every conversation I've had with most everybody that's contacted me about both buildings is we're replacing a hundred year old build over a hundred year old building now with the um, hooker school the old hooker school mm -hmm. and with the old fire station which was built by you know hook and ladder and donated property yet way back when so I don't you, the people I've spoke with don't want their kids and grandkids to pay for our mistakes again you know, right. let's let's tell the people what it's going to cost us. If it does cost us a little bit more, Dan, then you know that's just the way it's going to have to be. You know. We appreciate the select board support. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I appreciate that as well, but I'm asking for clarification. Are there stipulations on going to town meeting and and asking for more money? Are we changing the use of the building? And and again, I think. Any conversation along that line is so premature. I mean, I think we need, you, you guys stay the course with what you're doing. Okay. Again, you're going to have a lot more information come July. And I think what you're hearing is if, in fact, the architects come back and say, we can build you a tiny house 
And Matt Wolf, I just was looking at Tim, so I had to say that. A tiny house, and that's your new senior center for the allotted amount of money, then I think we really have to have some serious conversation because nobody's, that's not going to fly. On the other hand, if you make a strong argument that, yes, we've reduced it to 9,200 square feet, and we're still going to serve the needs of the seniors, not only the population today, but the growing population of baby boomers that you're anticipating. Mm -hmm. And you can say that with a straight face, and, and everybody's supportive of that. Then okay. that you know, so, and, and maybe it's going to be somewhere in the middle. We just don't know. Okay. You know? That's a fair statement. Okay. Kumbaya. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> they like no, you. I think you, you like you, Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> I like hearing that you're going to build a quality building. That that's very never, important. Ever taken off but the part that scares me is we're building for today, not no, tomorrow no. when we reduce it too much. I no. think. No, we just have more hours. Yeah, you have to remember too that the Congress is supposed to be nine exercise classes right now we've just made the july um uh schedule. schedule and it goes down to four classes because we can only hold them early in the morning when you give us a building with adequate heating and cooling we now have from nine to four to run classes four all year mm -hmm. round so we're no matter what size the building is, that doesn't get that gets increased automatically just because we have adequate adequate heating and cooling. So there's things like that that also enter into the equation. Um, Which makes sense. No? Yeah. Right. And, and the twelve thousand feet. Access. The twelve thousand feet is mm -hmm. definitely the pie in the sky. Right. And we're realizing we're Hadley. We can't have all of that where you know we'll, we'll get you there you couldn't we'll possibly have forgotten we're having <laughs> if the 12 came in on budget we wouldn't be wasting a lot of we time we started today. at 14,000 square feet and we came oh, down to okay. 1,000 square feet and now we're going down well, schematic design right. simply means what are all the things that you offer and how many people do you want to serve and then the experts come in and assign a square footage you take each one of those puzzle pieces put them together and they ended up at 12,000 square feet can those be changed? Well, okay. Yeah, the classroom can double as the conference room. Ba -da 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 -da. And, you, and you look at it all over again and try and figure out, can we still do everything we want to do but with, this, with the space being used in a different manner? As I'm sure you all are very aware, the disposal of water from the parking lot has turned out, I think both with the fire station and the senior center plan, to be a gigantic problem or issue, yeah. not fully anticipated. And the latest, uh, my hope personally, and the architects are working on this, is that by scaling down the parking lot, they'll have room for surface retention ponds or whatever would be the alternative to very expensive underground work. And I'm hopeful that's going to save hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah. That's uh, one of the things we're waiting right. for. And I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, or if I'm right, but that gives you, me a little ray of hope. Do you know what the figure is for that? Because uh, I, I well, it's 200,000. It it it's 200,000. For the water disposal underneath. Okay. Because the, the, the fire substation is only $88,700, so, which is. It's a smaller area. Yeah, they don't. Yeah. And yeah, they don't need the parking that small. we do. Yeah. 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 All right, so if anybody has any more detailed questions for you guys, um, we can contact any member of the committee directly. But in, otherwise, we'll look forward to hearing what you have to say come July. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, you know, well, that and they'd Tuesday. be able to ask you questions at this weekend's Chicken to Go, right? Yes, absolutely. Is that no, Saturday or Sunday? Five. It's Sunday. Sunday, okay. Sunday, June 11th. Pick up at 11.30 and 1.30. Chicken to Go for the Council on Aging. We're looking for a million seven <laughs> <laughs> to build a fourteen thousand to build a fourteen thousand square foot That's building. So, you, uh, so if you want half to so, so if you want to donate more than ten dollars, <laughs> and the tickets are available where? Uh, At the senior, senior center. center. Okay. All right. Thanks, Thank everybody. You. Thanks, team. Good night. Okay. So I, I think this is our last agenda item. We have um, countdown to fall town meeting. David. I thought we voted yeah, that. Yeah, you already done that. Oh, okay, so we're done, done with that? You done did Safe. that. Jesus. Oh, I think okay. we're done. 
<laughs> so we have a countdown um, being proposed by David to Fall Town Meeting, and you had given us this draft previously, right? Right. Right. And then um, also talking about goal setting, uh, what the select board would like to accomplish in the coming months. So David, you want to start? Did you say you have more time available at the next meeting? Yes. Do you want to defer this into the next meeting? Sure. Uh, I I would like to work a little bit on the goal setting. Uh, yeah. Unless you want to, you want a generic conversation tonight, or would you like a? No, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm fine. If people aren't, if you want more time, so we can talk about that, I'm happy to want to do that next week, or the twenty, either the fourteenth or twenty-first is fine. Yeah, it sure. works. Which one right. is more time available to us? The fourteenth or the twenty-first? Uh, You'll think. find out when you get the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> well, th there's some appointments that are a little bit fluid right now. Okay. Just because you've got to talk to the police chief and fire chief, we've confirmed Joe Shea, but then. Yeah, let me let me see what the for the twenty first looks like. Um, Evans. We haven't firmed up Terry Williams yet either. David no, says he's yeah. trying to do that. Right, that's one of the yeah, key ones. Maybe that'd be the twenty first then. Yeah, twenty first is yeah. Be more time. We got that. We have a lot on the twenty first, so I'd sooner better than later. Yeah, Let's do the fourteenth. We got the Hynoski property to deal with. The, uh, annual appointments. We've got uh, fire substation, senior center, tax, senior tax work, uh, work off program. We're going to have the ambulance. Uh, Are we going to have the ambulance group coming in? All right, ambulance. Because if we're going to send Amherst a letter, we need to do that. We can do that the twenty-first. Yeah, before Both July one. Okay. So. Okay. Fourteenth. Yeah. Yep, so 14th. Or, All right, or, so if everybody could be thinking about goals. For service or where, where is the ambulance committee? They'll on? be in to tell us. Right. We, we still have another meeting between now and then. So okay. so the 21st, you would set aside that mm -hmm. as a tri-board meeting as well. So mm -hmm. that's a pretty full full night. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> so you get the next two weeks off. Well, we got to think about that. Um. <laughs> I can take any night off. Okay. So is that it then for the agenda this evening? Uh, I think Finance Committee is here. Is there anything is there from yeah, Finance? Anything I'm looking is you're meeting tomorrow night? Yeah. Need any clarification on anything that occurred this evening? <laughs> okay. So, um, any announcements other than uh, Jerry already handled the chicken to go? Um. The uh, annual fish and derby happens this weekend at the Lower Reservoir for the Young Men's Club. Fish and derby starts at 8 o'clock. It's going to run from 8 till 12. Hopefully everybody knows where the Lower Reservoir is. If you don't, contact Hometown Hall and we can get you there. A lot of fun there. I know they're putting in a bunch of fish. No early fishermen. Tis. And then July 30th, isn't there a Polish dinner hosted by the Most Holy Redeemer at the Young Men's Club? There is. There mm -hmm. is. So happy that you mentioned that. Mm -hmm. And tickets are available for that either at the um, Most Holy Redeemer Parish office or they are also being sold after masses from this point until shortly before. Then we have um, a big thank you to everyone that participated in the Memorial Day Parade. Uh, it was a great success. We had a good time. Tom got a couple of bruises, but <laughs> that, darn, <laughs> that darn Tootsie Roll came out of nowhere, you know. Um, but uh, really thank you to the Legion and uh, Gene Baxter, who organizes also, and uh, everyone that participated. We really had a, had a nice day. Um, then I'd also like to thank the 20 Acres Farm, um, Tom and Pat Zusko and Tom and Joan, and I, I know it was Tom and Joan that always decorates the uh, front of our town hall with their flowers, and it always looks beautiful, and it uh, still does. It's a great thing to have for the summer. So thank you very much to the Zuskos. We appreciate it very much. I think the Asparagus Festival was a huge hit. I think 99.9% uh, .9 of the feedback that, that I got was good. Mm -hmm. I know the vendors were happy with it. Whoever sent the weather did a great job. Yep. It was good to have uh, John LeBeau, the uh, Commissioner of Agriculture in town, uh, 
and uh, I think it was it's a great event. I love to see our common being used for events like that. Mm -hmm. That's great. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. If not, I'll entertain a motion. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good night, everybody. Good night.